floats and the issues that happens with floats. Uh, so floats, uh, as we mentioned, they are stored in a really neat way. One is to keep track of whether it's positive or negative. Uh, the next eight bits are the exponent. And then the bottom bits are the mantissa. And so that is how it gets broken up. Uh, just to kind of talk about what it is, the mantissa is kind of interesting. Um, it essentially, uh, this first one is whether there should be a 0.5 or not. Then the next one's whether there should be a 0.25 or not. And then the next one is whether there should be a 0.125 or not. Um, and so this number essentially just kind of adds up to be some fractional thing and it gets multiplied by two to some exponent I won't get into all the details. The exponent also involves a thing called a bias, which you don't need to know about. The important thing is that um, it's scientific notation and it's always an approximation. That's kind of the, the main thing you have to worry about with floats is because even if you just kept going for a long, long time, you know, and eventually this bottom one's gonna be some really small thing in the mantissa, um, you're only gonna have so many significant digits um, of accuracy, right? And that number is usually about six. You usually get about six sig figs of accuracy. Then after that, the approximation just completely breaks breaks all apart. So if we look specifically at a number, uh, so point 0.1 is the number I just kind of picked as my example. Uh, point 0.1, I went to the trouble to figure out exactly how it's stored. Um, I confirmed it with MPLAB, so it's right. Um, it stores it in here for a zero for the sign. Um, it uses that as the exponent because I, I mentioned it's got some bias. Um, and then this is the mantissa. Um, and you can actually see there's kind of like a pattern going on here, right? So there's a, uh, you know, a repeating block of 1100, and then the bottom one got rounded. You can see that it rounded up, so the number that's actually stored for point 0.1 is slightly bigger. It turns out that if you take this number and convert it back, um, if you say x is equal to point 0.1, um, what you're actually saving is you're saving it as this number here. So you can see you've got some number of sig figs, but then it falls apart in the approximation. The reason I mention that is let's say you took two numbers. Um, you took point 0.1 and you took this point 0.105 stored them into x and y, and then he said, are x and y the same? It would say yes. It would say yes, they are equal. And the reason is, is because they both are put into memory the exact same way. So the same bits are what's stored in memory, therefore they're the same. The <clears throat> other little gotcha with floats, because they're approximations, again, so let's say you had x, which you just put in as, you know, 1.0, which is, you know, pretty accurate. And then y you put in as 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1. Um, you can take my word for it. There are 10 of them here. Oops. If you add them all up, though, since these 0.1s are approximations like that, then y could be as high uh, as this number here. So if you tried to say, is X and Y the same, this time it's gonna say that they're different. And the reason they're different is because the error approximation accumulated as you added more and more on, you got this, this like compounding error problem. And sure enough, 10.1s um, is not the same um, as 1.0. So they are in fact different. Um, moral of the story is avoid equal equals when you're comparing floats. If you ever want to compare floats, always do it with like two steps. Say like, you know, is it less than this number plus like 0 .001 and is it greater than this number minus 0 .001? You always have to kind of do that. Is it within this error tolerance? All right, so that's, uh, <clears throat> that's kind of all we've got on um, integers and floats. Hopefully you, you understand pretty well how they work. See ya.